think we can all agree this world is far from perfect. What was once a bountiful paradise teeming with life and things that will fuck your shit up for fun is now chock full of pollution, famine and people who like their steak well done. It seems every issue solved results in two more in its place, like the heads of a problematic hydra. Thankfully, every now and again we're gifted with a real visionary, a veritable Heracles who will slay the fearsome beast with a deft and skilled hand, restoring hope to the people and peace to the land. This video doesn't feature that guy, rather the complete opposite, because while some people are good at solving problems, Mike are good at creating them. Hastily proposed budget cuts and healthcare changes under a Republican-controlled Congress have queer people worried about their health. Alright, so whatever his name is here speaks on behalf of all the gayers. He must be the king of LGBT. No, wait, queen? Queen. Not sure how worried they all are though when that flag Trump is holding says LGBT's for Trump. Seems quite supportive, though if they used an apostrophe I will lose all respect. Let's have a look at the original. Nope, we're all good. Cool, moving on. And I know conservatives are obsessed with what I do in my private time, but in this one instance maybe shoving something down my throat isn't the best way to seal the deal. Right, if Mike ever does a video on stereotypes, I am shooting that shit down within the fucking hour. After that, they have no right. No right. You can't have it both ways. You can't complain about stereotypes and then fucking be one. Shit, the voice, the gestures, the fucking posture. That shit was enough to turn a gay man homophobic. Here are four ways the Trump administration plans to stop counting, researching, and treating the most vulnerable queer people in the US. Oh shit, so he's ceasing all or medical treatment on gays. It's gonna be illegal to give a lesbian life-saving surgery. Pharmacies will be obligated to put up signs saying we don't serve no gayers here as flocks of LGBTs wither away outside from untreated outbreaks of, I, I don't know, scabies? I think we might both be exaggerating a little bit here, man who won't even put his name to this video. After years of lobbying, we finally saw elderly queer people included in national healthcare surveys in 2014. Okay, I'm sure that's a victory for the gay community. A fucking small victory mind since in the recent years before 2014 there weren't waves of homosexuals dying for reasons that scientists just couldn't figure out because there wasn't a little box to check on a survey. If anything, all that does is allow someone to look at the health survey and be like, shit, this motherfucker's had everything. Polio, ringworm, lupus, dragon pox, what the fuck has this guy been doing? Oh, he's gay, I get it. And listen to this guy's voice, right? Doesn't he sound like Kermit the Frog? But Trump's Secretary of Health and Human Services. You can't tell me that doesn't sound like Kermit the fucking frog. I can never unhear that now. I don't even care what he's talking about anymore. This whole thing is overshadowed by a literal Muppet. Tom Price chose to remove questions about sexual orientation from two of his department surveys aimed at seniors. Have you ever thought why though, instead of just assuming the government hates the shit out of the gays? I mean, it wasn't removed entirely, just from the elderly survey, perhaps because that generation doesn't hold the same fucking values as you libtards. The survey offices were probably rammed with old men slamming their forms on the desk, stubbing a cigarette out on the box that says I'm straight, and declaring I was in a war, how fucking dare you ask me a question like that? to a chorus of applause and the rustling of colostomy bags. Because if you really care about a community, kneecap their oldest members first. Mate, I've met some old folks that are more likely to kneecap you for being such a patronizing little shitwad. You wanna change the world, Kermit? You're gonna have to wait for the old guard to die out first because they are unmovable, stubborn fucks. And if they weren't, I'd be swearing at you in a different language right now. But seriously, who cares if they're statistically more likely to live alone because a virus ravaged their partners in the government? government wouldn't let them get married. How would ticking a box stop someone from living alone once their partner's died? It doesn't contain some ultra small fine print that states upon your partner's demise they will be resurrected by the mighty god Imhotep. It was a fucking survey Kermit, not a declaration of independence from reality. Trump also wants to cut funding for research that helps all of us. We have reliable data on drugs to prevent and treat HIV because of the National Institutes of Health, specifically through their Office of AIDS Research. Well, you say all of us, but that really only helps those with HIV, doesn't it? This is all getting really AIDS-based though. Obviously not something that only affects gay people, so why all the focus on homosexuals? I guess it just wouldn't be Mike if they didn't wrap it up in some kind of discrimination, would it? But during an early round of spending proposals, Trump proposed cutting the NIH budget by 20%, 
which could impede the approval process for some of the drugs that matter most to the LGBTQ community. Oh yeah, because you've all got AIDS, and you? 32 billion is how much they get, now that is a lot of spondoolies. 20% of that is still a lot, for me, anyway, fucking hell, but it won't affect the bigger picture much in the way of research. More likely they're gonna have to turn the lights off in the lab when they go home and stop using the centrifuge to make milkshakes. To be fair, Trump has promised to maintain some Bush-era AIDS relief programs, but at the end of the day, Trump and Price are cutting money that was originally allocated for HIV research, prevention, and treatment. And that money was originally allocated to something else before that. Fucking hell, Kermit. It's not like he's pocketing the money for himself. It's just going towards something else, and the funding hasn't been cut completely. There's only so much money to go around, dickhead, especially when you fuck-ups demand everything for free. Speaking of treatment, let's talk about PrEP. When taken daily is pre-exposure prophylaxis, or PrEP. I like that. PrEP because no one can say pre-exposure prophylaxis when they have a cock in their mouth. Truvada is up to 99% effective at preventing the transmission of HIV. What a time to be alive, eh? Medicine is so fantastic nowadays that some people would rather take a couple of pills a day than not have sex with someone who's HIV positive. It's like you're in this nice safe bunker in the middle of a war zone, right? And someone says to you, hey, you can stay here if you like, there's absolutely no chance of getting shot. Or we can give you this flimsy bit of Kevlar and you can brave the storm of bullets. Who in their right mind would say, give me the vest, I'm going out there. There's just no sense of self-preservation, is there? The National Institutes of Health sponsored one of the largest PrEP studies in the country, meaning that without their help, we might not have FDA approval for PrEP use today. Yeah, and they aren't going anywhere, Kermit. It was just a budget cut. They haven't been bombed from existence, and people aren't going to start keeling over and dying of AIDS en masse. I mean, they will eventually, because it's a horribly efficient disease, and I doubt an extra 20% of funding is going to change that anytime soon. If you want to blame anyone, blame the guys who ate tainted monkey me and got this whole ball rolling. This is important, particularly because a CDC study shows that increased use of PrEP could prevent up to 185,000 new cases of HIV by 2020. That's almost 200,000 people not worrying what they fuck. That's insane. How low do you think that number would be without this safety net? Don't get me wrong, this shit is good if your wife or husband's contracted it, still risky in my books, but I'm sure that's a risk many are willing to take for the person they love. But if you're treating it like you can fuck anyone, no questions asked and consequence free, hell, you deserve to get AIDS. But even if we preserve funding for research, it doesn't matter if the people who need treatment most don't have access to it. The funding is still there, you fuckwit. Fucking hell. Why did I choose to sit and do a video with a guy who looks like Ali Kakesh's missing ear? HIV disproportionately affects black and or Latino communities, who, according to a Department of Health and Human Services survey, are less likely to have access to consistent and affordable health care than their white non-Latino counterparts. So more white people decide to get health insurance than black or Latino pe- It says it at the top of the fucking graph. Don't pretend they get turned away at the door because of the color of their skin when it's because they didn't get health insurance, which they would need for continued treatment in the US, and knowing this, they went out and got HIV anyway. I mean, it's it's all in the name of those pills, isn't it? PrEP, as in prepare to get AIDS. Fighting for our health means fighting proposed cuts in Medicaid that could further limit those most vulnerable to infection from protecting themselves against HIV. Everyone is fucking vulnerable to an infection. It's a pretty non-discriminatory virus, you know? It's really progressive like that. But for a lot of us, not getting AIDS is easy. I'm doing it right now. I'm not even putting any effort into it. I'm just sat here not getting AIDS. But you know, if I were around AIDS, I'd seriously think twice before sticking my dick in it. And even then, I'd wrap it up in three condoms and several layers of cling film. I know that's not how everyone gets it. And in some cases, the person didn't know about it or didn't have a choice, but we're not talking about those people, are we? Planned Parenthood, it's not just for pregnant women. Oh, humor on the internet is really going downhill, isn't it? It's like everyone's trying to be a meme. Look, we know it's not just for pregnant women, but according to you, it is just for white people, so go figure. Every Republican's favorite punching bag actually provides STI and HIV testing, as well as gender-affirming hormone therapy. So, how does this fit in with what you've been saying, Kermit? Or are you just showing us you can read things now? Personally, I think it's because the whole thing is a bit of a money drain that a lot of people abuse and take for granted.
insulted, thinking it's a human right of some kind. I mean, nothing's free. Someone down the line foots the bill. Maybe if Planned Parenthood turned a profit of some kind, then the heat would be taken off of it. I don't know how, though. Perhaps opening a McDonald's in the waiting room or something. Then you can chow down on a Big Mac while waiting for the unborn fetus to get pulled apart and vacuumed out of you. That's got to bring in some revenue. In fact, the organization averages 650,000 tested for HIV every year. Well, that's 650,000 people who need to be a little more careful with their lifestyle then, isn't it? And that is fucking nothing when it comes to the population of the US. Can you see why the funding is getting cut now? Because it's something that 320,750,000 people don't use. $25 billion is still a lot of fucking money for what? 0.02% of the population? A fact Mike Pence must know after a 2016 study showed that closing a Planned Parenthood in Scott County, Indiana helped spur an HIV outbreak. Fuck me, is everyone fucking everyone in Indiana? They've all got AIDS there now. Buy shares in Trojan and Jerex while you can because they're about to go through the fucking roof. Just how much did closing a clinic help spur on people contracting HIV? Does no one take responsibility for their own actions anymore? Can no one make a big fucking mistake without passing the buck on to an empty fucking building? This is why I'm in favor of removing all signs that say mind the step. If you aren't looking where you're going, you deserve what happens next. While Republicans claim we spend too much on clinics around the country, the closure of just one Planned Parenthood shows how lives and costs could have been saved if conservatives stopped playing politics with our health. It's not playing politics with your health if you insist on gambling with it. You shut one Planned Parenthood clinic and all of a sudden everyone has HIV. If that isn't the most fucked up thing you've ever heard, I want to live where you do. I don't get it. If the safety net had been taken away, why did so many people keep walking across the tightrope? Data shows queer youth are at a disproportionate risk for bullying in schools, and statistically more likely to commit suicide. Well, then I guess gay really doesn't mean happy anymore, does it? Look, bullying is a big part of life. It allows you to grow tougher skin, stand up for yourself, and maybe even fire a couple of shots back. And suicide is just getting fucking stupid. People used to kill themselves over real shit, you know? Killed six million Jews and now the Allies are knocking on your front door. Not club fucking penguins shutting down. Not surprising, gay youths are topping themselves though. As soon as they come out, they're accosted by liberals telling them how oppressed they are. In 2015 alone, 75% of trans youth reported feeling unsafe in schools. Yeah, but by trans youth, you mean people like Milo and Riley, as in not trans people. If you asked anyone who identifies as trans, of course they'll say they feel unsafe. They're fucking attention seekers. And they love a survey. So while old white men in North Carolina and Texas call trans people sexual predators with no evidence, and despite their own party's track record, <laughs> well, takes one to know one, I guess. And why's it always got to be old white men? Does their skin colour seriously have an impact on how they do their job? Do you really think that? If not, why bring it up every fucking time? They're also cutting funding to mental health services that queer people need when they're demonised just for being themselves. Except that is in no way a mental issue, so yeah, get rid of that shit. We can't have everyone going to a doctor every time they get called a wrong un. Maybe stick up a sign on the hospital door saying they're just words. Get over it, you ponce. By 2020, Republicans want to eliminate the requirement that Medicaid cover mental health services, and cuts to the NIH would likely affect the Mental Health Services Administration. They aren't sat in their opulent palaces of splendor, gleefully rubbing their hands together over the prospect of cutting funding for medical services. And anyway, mental health institutions have been shutting down all over the fucking place for years now. Have you only just noticed, or did it only start to matter to you when it began to affect the LGBT community? The battle for fair and equitable queer health care isn't over. Queer healthcare, for fuck's sake. You'll stick that word onto anything, won't you? Four years time and there'll be a queer Coca-Cola. And I don't see how you can call for equitable queer healthcare when it's only for queer people as per your title. Not really equitable, is it? If you are poor, queer, a person of colour or all of the above. Just not white people because statistically they pay for health insurance, the racist bastards. Fucking incredible how you lot can work skin colour into anything, even AIDS. This administration's pursuing science and health policies that intend to leave you behind. Oh, 
Oh, that is such bullshit. Like, fuck, is anyone of a certain demographic getting left behind? This is science and medicine. It affects everyone, including those in the current administration, white or not. Plus, even if they do say, nah, fuck research into treatment for HIV, do yourself a favour, right, and don't fuck anyone who has it. Try not to be like the people of Indiana, who must have caught it as some kind of protest against the Planned Parenthood clinic shutting down. And to those, I say, way to go, guys. I bet that really showed them. Thanks for watching, guys. Please consider becoming a patron to support this channel and keep me well lubricated. The link is in the description. And remember, if you do contract HIV, try to stay positive.